Okay, some rough and ready uh, techniques here. We're simply layering up these different clouds and erasing away with, with soft edged erasers at, at different opacities to kind of bite away at the, at the image. So this is nothing new. We've done this stuff before. It can be incredibly effective. But before I go too far, I want to make sure I save my work. And because I opened this up as assignment two, it's still assignment two. So I want to say file, save as. So if you haven't done this yet, make sure you do. And we're going to save it as a new file type to the desktop. And then we're going to use some other uh, tools we've used before, things like clone stamp, dodge and burn. All of them can be very helpful. So I'm going to change this to assignment four. Always put your name as part of your file name. So Carl assignment four, cloud creature, uh, SP19 if I want to be specific. And then navigate to the desktop to hit Command D as a PSD. And now all I have to do is hit Command F to save it in the future. Okay, so I'm going to erase around certain edges. Help this blend in. Really watching out for the, the sharp edges that can be produced. And I'm secure in the knowledge that even as I delete things, like erase away, um, the cutout of my creature is still there. So I'm not going to lose my creature unless I'm cutting out from that layer. So I'm just trying to get rid of those little traces of blue sky that are still plaguing this image a little bit. I can also do a lot of internal compositing. So if I want, say, this cloud, steal that, Command-J, duplicate it, I can move that down, and I can warp it, and I can use that for the, the belly a little bit, where I have shadow here on my creature, and for that back foot. And I'm not changing the angle of the light, right? But I am distorting it pretty massively. Then going in with my eraser and blending it in, softening it, getting rid of the hard edges. So clouds just layer up on top of each other. And I like, by using the low opacity eraser, I like the kind of little soft trails of ghost clouds you get because you will see that in the sky as long as the colors and the values aren't way out of range with each other and so i'm basically painting by erasing by revealing things underneath And I shouldn't be afraid of revealing and erasing away from my base layer as well, every once in a while. All right. Keep playing with this reference. There it is. Okay, once I've gotten rid of all the blue and all of the sharp edges that aren't helping, then I can start doing the clone stamping and maybe even some dodging and burning to help it suggest my creature even more. But remember, dodge and burn is something we always tend to overuse. 
So we want to put it on its own layer, and we'll probably use an overlay layer. You hold down Option, and then click. Yeah, so this is going to give us practice at these at these techniques, right? So I've gotten rid of, I think, all of the, the really hard edges that I don't want. Um, if I want to do it in a selective way, I can use my magic wand, select the empty space, go to select and mask so it softens, say OK. It has all my settings. It's feathering it. And then instead of just deleting, come on, OK. Instead of deleting, I can actually use my eraser and target it because that selection will be like a stencil. And it will soften the edges within just a little bit as I go. But you can see the different layers can sometimes leave hard edges you don't want. So you just want to tackle all of those, whether they're on your base layer or on your cloud layers on top, which is why it can be really helpful to merge some of your layers too. I'm just biting away, biting away. Now, the reason you want to get rid of all those hard edges before we clone stamp is you don't want to be clone stamping hard edges and repeating them over and over across your image. I know I don't want that. Let me bring another another composite onto the tail here. We'll see. And just like all of our projects, you don't want to get too sucked into details. You don't want to zoom in so much you lose sight of the overall image, right? Okay, so now what to do? Let's go to a lower opacity eraser and knock this stuff back around the legs a little bit, especially when you want to hide kind of vertical columns, you can do that with little clouds cutting across, uh, little traces. And you can keep playing with the opacity of your eraser to kind of blend it in. That's something we'll learn in digital painting. The opacity of your brush is just as important as the color you choose. And the only blues or the only sky color we're trying to reveal is the one we painted. Okay, so now clone stamp. How can we do this responsibly? We go on top of all of our cloud layers. I'm going to mark it red. And I'm going to call this my clone stamp layer. I always like to do it on an extra layer, so I'm not replacing pixels as I go. Then I use the clone stamp tool, and I select it to affect all layers. right? And then I'm actually going to turn off my sky group and turn off any, any smart layers I have. So I'm just looking at my clouds, right? And it shows me where I still have blues and things. Now to use the clone stamp, I'm going to use it at not 100% opacity. Let's try to use it around 60% opacity. I want it as soft as possible, a so hardness of zero, 
fairly large because I'm using a stylus. That's pressure sensitive for size. And now I can target from anywhere by holding down Option, click, and then it will paint at a low opacity that texture onto another part of my composition. And so the first place I'm going to target is over these blues that I don't think really are what I want. Or any sharp edges that are showing up that I don't want. Sometimes you do want sharp edges. But all of these little blues, I don't want those. I might want them to be shadowed, but I don't want them to be the, the bright blue of the sky. So I paint over them with cloud texture. I'm using my stylus to be pretty directive. So I'm only painting in where I need to. And always moving my target. The clone stamp definitely takes practice so it doesn't look just super artificial, but it's the most like painting we've done so far. Now this is doing it with little detail spots. Kind of get rid of those, those traces of the, the hard edge blue sky. But we can also do a big picture, like on the foot. I can get a lot of this internal cloud and kind of soften it around. So let's turn the sky back on now. And just try not to composite the sky anywhere. Or because I've done the edges. Now I can work on the insides. And I can bring the shadow behind, you know, something that suggests the eye. Like so. And this is all safely on its own layer. And I can build up around some of these edges that look still too, too crisp and kind of push them out. Always looking at my navigator, you know, seeing it from a distance. All right, so clones there. I could find something that's particularly bright and use that to kind of catch light around an area I want brighter, but I gotta be careful about punching the sky in there. But the beauty of clone stamp is if we overdo it, right, we can always take its opacity down or just erase with it. And by layering clone stamp over clone stamp at low opacity, just like when we started, I'm creating new cloud textures each time. But if I overdo it, I'm going to lose any of that kind of integrity to the cloud, the sharpness of it. So I want to be careful. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so now we've done some clone stamping. Now I can turn it on and off, see where it helps. I think it's helping. But I can bite away from it too using my eraser, where I think it might be too strong or too bright. And then on and on.